On the 9th of July, when Greyhound announced that it was dropping uh, all of its western service and also the northwestern part of Ontario, uh, the reason for it was that uh, they no longer had an economic uh, viable uh, service model for the rest of the country. That's why they were dropping out. So we had to react to that situation. Unfortunately, a lot of private companies also uh, stepped forward and said, we want to uh, come into the market and we think that we can make these routes work. We think this is a much better uh, market force based approach and we want to encourage that kind of enterprise here in Canada. So the good news is that about 87% of those routes that have been abandoned by Greyhound are now going to be covered uh, by private enterprise. That's a good thing. For those that are not and where we have concerns about not uh, abandoning vulnerable citizens, we have said to the provinces, we will uh, be there with you to finance uh, the, uh, the, uh, the running of bus services on those non-viable routes if you come to us and say that uh, uh, we're going to have to uh, provide uh, subsidies for these particular but routes. But what happens if the provinces don't step in, in remote communities or whatever? Are you going to fill the gap or are people on their own? We are at the moment focused on filling the gap left by the departure of Greyhound, the announcement by Greyhound for the routes that they announced as of the 9th of July. Uh, as I have said, over the long term, during the next two years, federally, uh, from a federal and provincial point of view, we have struck a working group that will look at the long term beyond two years for all of Canada. But a working group's not going to get me a bus. The working group will look at a long-term solution for bus service in the country.